Hey everybody, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kathy Hester and I... Okay, I think the streaming is back. So let's try that again. Hello, <laughs> have you seen this a second time? I'm Kathy Hester, welcome to my kitchen. We have a super special guest for you and that is Tiffany Wilkerson from inviteplantstoeverymeal.com. So you need to go visit her stuff. So one of the things that we are talking about today and all week and next week, right, is the bundle, the plant-based bundle that's like this ginormous, amazing value. It's $49. It's worth like $4,700. Yeah. My course that's in there is worth $35 alone. Some people are worried they're going to get overwhelmed. So I think Tiffany might have some tips. My tips are go through, you can download all the PDFs at once and then come back and go back and sign up for things as you wish. But even if there's only two or three things, you're getting your money's worth, but there are dozens that I'm, I'm looking to. So I'm going to let Tiffany, Tiff, oh, Tiffany, I'm so sorry. I'm changing your name. Tiffany. <laughs> tell you a little bit about herself and what she has in the bundle. And then she's going to show us how to make Mason jar meals. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you for having me on as a guest. Hello everybody. And happy Friday. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about so many things. I have a lot of good energy today. So this bundle and, and just everything. So, Hey, my name is Tiffany Wilkinson. Um, I am here in the Dallas, Texas area and I am a proud whole food plant-based uh, individual. This has been 11 years for me. In October, it was 11 years. And I keep track of that because my journey began after losing my grandmother to stage four colon cancer in October, 11 years ago. And from that stemmed the rest of my life to the way it is now. I knew after that that I needed to change how I lived nutritionally. Um, when I started the journey, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about vegan or whatever. You know, I'm born and raised in Texas. So <laughs> we eat a lot of, you know, you can imagine burgers and hot dogs, things like that. That's just how I grew up. So um, to make that type of a change was different for me. Um, and uh, I didn't know anybody who knew uh, about it. And so I just had to dive in. I knew that it was going to be for me. So I just had to learn it. So I had a wonderful time learning it, 11 years in counting. Um, eventually I um, transitioned my family. And so now we are all uh, plant-based as well. And, you know, it's just been an amazing journey. Um, I was telling a friend the other day that I'm just as excited now about being whole food plant-based as I was in the beginning when I first started. And so when I started in the beginning, I started off pescatarian for a little while and then I transitioned, but it's so exciting. And everything I thought I knew about plant-based eating um, was nothing like it truly is. I enjoy this lifestyle. There's just so many varieties. That's one of the things that I thought, you know, in the beginning, not having any knowledge, I was like, well, I, I guess I'll just be, you know, just eating just, you know, one or two things, you know, very, very limited. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So um, it's just been an amazing ride. Um, it's my passion now to pay it forward um, to those because everyone needs to absolutely um, take part in this whole food plant-based journey. And um, that's what I do. That's what I try to do every day and shout it from the rooftops and take pictures of what I eat and share what I know, have to pay it forward. I love planting the seed and so this is what I do. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to come back in with both of us for a minute. I'm going to ask you some questions. I think about yes. that because that was wonderful. Um, and it, it is always something that kind of gears us up to make those kinds of big changes. Mm -hmm. And tell me about some of the misconceptions. You said one of your misconceptions was that you're going to eat the same thing all the time. So I think a lot of times people think vegan, much less plant-based plant-based. They definitely, lettuce lettuce yeah. right they're like mm, bowls and bowls and bowls of lettuce and it <laughs> couldn't be further from the truth yeah. though i like my lettuce too so mm -hmm. you know but i love my potatoes mm -hmm. yeah 
I was, yeah, I used to think, okay, well, well, I, they used to call it, oh, you're just going to eat rabbit food. And so I'm just like, oh, well, okay, okay, if that's what it, it entails. Um, but that's not true. I mean, we can take the produce section and make any type of gourmet meal that you can think of. We can create any type of flavor. If you want a little bit of Asian food, Mediterranean, Indian, you are not limited at all. If you can get your flavors down, you can create anything with textures and seasonings. That's just really what sells people in itself. Does it taste good and, and is it flavored well? You get that down, you can absolutely have a lot of fun with it. I could not agree more. And that's, that's one of the things that I do, like in my classes, I teach people how to combine things or how to go, your nose knows if it's mm -hmm. yuck or yum. Mm -hmm. So like if I wanted to put something in my tea right now, I could smell it with my tea and my nose would yeah. go, that's a great idea or don't you dare, right? Do you, mm -hmm. Did you find mm -hmm. that as you're trying to recreate some of those food memories? And that's something I talk about. So like I'm from North Carolina. You're from Texas, so meaty memories are a part of our past. And I noticed yeah. at some point I was like, I want barbecue. It was not that I wanted pig, mm -hmm. right? I wanted that texture. I wanted that memory mm -hmm. of flavors. Mm -hmm. And that's why barbecue jackfruit's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. What were a couple of things from your past that you found yourself recreating? Well, I mean, just the very, very basic one was nachos. So I loved Mexican food. So I loved that. And of course, fajitas and things like that. And, and so that was a big deal for me. I was like, wow, I guess I have to give up Mexican food. And you do not. And so I have just found a way to just play with beans and tweak, um, like you said, jackfruit. And, you know, it works. If you can just mimic that flavor. And it's funny that you said that a second ago. Because I still do that even when I'm tweaking recipes, I'll look at a seasoning and I, I can just look at it and say, yes, that will, it's like my taste buds can already say, yes, Tiffany, that's going to go well in here or no, that's going to be too strong or whatever. You just start, you just kind of pick up that talent to where you could look at seasonings before you even have to sample it. Your body and your nose and your taste buds just know this is going to go well together to give you a smoky flavor or this is not going to go well. And so once you just get in there and, and play with that, you can create anything. You do not have to give it up. You can replicate, I would say, almost everything that you probably remember growing up um, if you ate in the standard American diet. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. And I think that that is a, an interesting misconception. The only thing I will say is that it's not a talent. It's a learned thing. Mm -hmm. as far as putting spices together because a lot of times people will be like i want your nose somehow my nose is special my nose yeah. has done a lot of practice as has tiffany's <laughs> right so it makes it appear but mm -hmm. everybody has that capability and so yeah. experiment and like tiffany experimented to get to where she is and i experimented i tiffany i know you have lots more training like i'm just I'm a home cook that's a crazy mad scientist that practices until I can figure something out. From that, I've gained my experience. I know that you have a lot of other learned things behind you. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I tell you, once I jumped over on the plant side, which is much greener uh, on the other side, I just began to have this yearning for knowledge because I didn't know anything about it, made this change in my, my 30s. And I just was shocked at all the information that I never knew about. So mm -hmm. I was just craving information. So I watched documentaries, books, conferences, workshops. A um, couple of things I've done. I am a Food for Life instructor with PCRM. It was, and that's, the, that's what I knew I wanted to do um, pretty, pretty strongly because I feel like I can tell you, hey, this is the way to eat, which I love doing. But I also think it's even more effective to show you, right? People need to see, okay, no, I, I really can put this together. And it was delicious. If I show you how to create your own meals, that's an effective thing to do. You need to be able to see it. It's visual or visual learners. And so that's one of the ways that I thought that I could be most effective is, hey, actually, 
uh, finding curriculum that can show you how to do it. So I am a PCRM instructor. Um, I am also a health coach. I think that that was another important thing to try to conquer because it's a, it's a mind shift, right? Because a lot of us, when we make this change, um, it's after 20, 30, maybe even 40 years of traditional eating in the standard American diet. You truly have to rewire your brain. And there's a lot that comes along with that. And some people just need that one-on-one, -on -one, hey, I want to make the transition. And, you know, it's, you know, and, and another thing that I found out is that food is very personal for people. It holds a lot of memories, um, different things like that. And so you're working through a lot, some people, when they make that change. And so, you know, there's there's just a specific way I wanted to try to help people go through that. Um, I've done the... Um, culinary cooking school because I like my food to look pretty. Why not? We eat with our eyes. That's half the battle. And if I'm showing you how to eat, I want it to look attractive to where you just cannot wait to try it. So those are a couple of things that I've done just to, you know, try to reach everybody where they are on different levels, whether you're great in the kitchen, not great in the kitchen, you know, anything about the vegan lifestyle, you do, you don't, doesn't matter. I just wanted to be able to reach um, on whatever level anyone was. So that was important to me. I love that. And I also like, so I see all of those things in kind of one nice, beautiful, supportive package, right? Because yeah. I think sometimes when they're coming from a, a person is coming from a standard American diet, they may not know how to cook with whole right. grains and vegetables. So you in teaching classes, you're there to kind of support them along the way and show them and help them learn the way that they learn best. And I love that you do health coaching as well, because sometimes people are a little shyer at the beginning of some of this process and would like to do some things one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And even, I've just been talking to Tiffany for a little while, but I, she's so easy to talk to and so friendly and easygoing. I could imagine that you are an amazing coach. Wow. Thank you for that. I just, I enjoy, I enjoy what I do and it's important to get the word out. And it, it's true. And I think that I, I want everybody who's watching this too, to know that, no matter what your learning style or what you need, there's someone out there that matches that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to, to look around and see what you like. And, and here's the thing, you can make Tiffany's recipes and you can make my recipes and Tammy's recipes and Chef AJ's recipes, right? We're all in this together to support you in eating better and doing better where you are, because I, I don't know if people are saying this to you, Tiffany, but I certainly am feeling year three of the pandemic. <laughs> I'm kind of like, okay, can I, you know, what is the easiest, lowest entry point for dinner today for me? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm super excited to hear about some of your mason jar meals, because those sound like they are are right up my alley for something that I could just grab on those days that I have a teaspoon of energy instead of a quart of energy. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to get out of the way and let you demo some really yummy food. All right. Thank you for that. So yes, you just mentioned it when you said grab, it's a quick grab. So one of the things that I love about Mason jar meals is yes, it's a quick grab and it presents well. Like I mentioned this earlier, we eat with our eyes. Sometimes that's more than half the battle. And I'm very proud of the food that I eat because when I ate in the standard American diet, it did not have all of these colors and, and you know, just, just nutrition. And so I'm very proud of that now. And so being able to kind of showcase that in my meals with my meals in the meal jar, you know, works for me. So wanted to show people that it's something different that you can do because sometimes you want to change it up and oh, it's yeah. easy. It's a quick grab and um, it's definitely great for meal prepping. So, you know what? I may have to adjust my camera. Kathy, can you see my food? Let me see. Um, I do down? not see your food. I see it right halfway of the mason jar, about an inch of your blender. Ah, Okay. Here. I'll be right back. That's okay. I'll change. We'll be, we'll be here together and you go change. 
I'm actually, I'm caught too because I was looking for social media to put up. Yep, that's great. Okay. It's so funny because I look as tall as Tiffany and I don't, I didn't ask Tiffany how tall she is, but I am five one and a half. So I suspect Tiffany, my guesstimate is you are six to 12 inches taller than me. How tall are you? I am five, six. Really? Yeah. Yeah, That's you got it. Okay. Uh -oh, so I think switch... I'm still cut off here a little bit. You're cut off a little bit. Do you want to push? Um, yeah, I, I think you can pull it up a little bit more, okay. the camera. I'll... Gotcha. All right, let me know when. Let's see here. Right there. Oh, right there. Uh, up. Right there? You can do just a tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit more? Right there. Up. Now. I think okay. that's gonna. I think that's gonna get both everything in there. Yay! Woo All right. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna show you two different meals today that are in the ebook that are super super simple, and I want to give you the best of both worlds. I'm gonna show you how to make a rainbow salad, and then I'm also gonna show you how to make a Chinese um, noodle soup, which is really really good. We'll get to that in a second. So a little bit of mason jar 101. <laughs> so when you are putting your meals together, depending on what you're making, in most cases, you're going to use something that has a liquid. If that is the case, what you always want to do is at the bottom of your mason jar, and this is a quart size, you can use whatever, and I'll get to that in a second. But what you always want to do is start off with the liquid at the bottom of your mason jar, and work your way up from your wettest ingredients all the way to your driest ingredients. Yeah, like so for today, since we're doing a salad, our most dry ingredient is gonna be the arugula, okay? And so that's pretty much it. Another thing I tell people about mason jars is, now this is a quart size, don't necessarily get tied into the size of the jar. I tell people, select a jar size that matches your appetite for that meal. So okay. hopefully that makes sense. So, so like I'm not a big breakfast person. So I would not need a jar this large um, for oatmeal or anything like that. But when it comes to lunchtime, I love a huge, huge salad. And so I would definitely go with this particular size, probably two of them because I love a big salad. Um, but just play around with it. You have mason jars of all sizes. Just choose what your appetite is going to match for that meal. and You'll be just fine. Uh, okay, so I want to show you, first of all, this is a two-part um, recipe. I want to show you, first of all, how to make your own salad dressing. Super, Ooh, super simple. That's the best yeah. part, right? Yeah, because, you know, a lot of us, we create these delicious, gorgeous, nutrient-filled salads, and then we sabotage it by putting a dressing on that just like, uh, kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to make your own dressing. Today, it's going to be a strawberry dressing, and the recipe is in the ebook. And it's just simple ingredients that won't sabotage your salad and very, very simple to put together. So we're doing strawberries. Now, if you're not a strawberry fan, use blueberries. Use whatever fruit that you like, whatever your taste buds like. All right, so that is the strawberry. We're gonna do a teaspoon of chia seeds. We're going to do some balsamic vinegar. And then that is it. So the only other thing we're going to put in here is the water. Now, how much water you put in depends on how you like your salad dressing, the consistency. If you like a thicker salad dressing, use less. If you like it fairly thin, use more. So let's just go with this for right now. I'm gonna show you how it comes out. <laughs> And so, we, we have a question, Tiffany, from Kathy. Um, do you just buy jars on Amazon? Are they the same as far as quality? Just pick your size and go? Or do you yeah. have a particular brand? 
No, I don't have a particular brand. I probably have more of maybe the ball um, brand, but I also have several ones. There's not really one that I like more than the other. I would recommend a wide mouth jar. Okay? Yes. And I'm glad you asked that, asked that question because this is something, oh. yeah, this is what makes, you don't have to get this. This is a little funnel. Um, you don't have to get this, but I ordered this off Amazon. And to answer your question, uh, yes, you can order your mason jars off Amazon. They're everywhere in, nowadays. Grocery stores, they're everywhere. Um, but I would recommend a wide mouth because I love using the funnels. I got this off of Amazon. Maybe it was like 10 to 12 bucks. And it just helps things go in a little bit easier, a little less mess as you're layering. You don't have to, but it is something that you can use. Okay. So that's a great question. And there's another, somebody wants to know what the brand of your blender is. It's so cute. It's so little. Oh my goodness. And this thing is so old and it's still going. It's a Hamilton Beach. Yeah. And nice. uh, let's say, okay, if I just have to guess, I don't know, at least five years old. I'm surprised <laughs> it still works, but hey, I'm happy. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so here is our dressing. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put that at the bottom. Now you can decide how much dressing you want. But we'll start off there for right now. Because this whole thing is customizable. Tiffany, now let's say, if, I'm huh? sorry, I know I'm interrupting you a bunch. I apologize for that. But is that going to thicken up as it sits in the fridge from the chia seeds? Like when, when we put it in there, do we want it exactly the consistency or a little thinner than what we wanted in the end? You know what? I guess it's a personal choice. You could go a little bit thinner because yes, it will thicken up with the chia seeds. Um, or if you like a very thick dressing, then you could just kind of do it as the recipe shows. So you can play around with it, but yes, it will thicken up. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. It looks delicious. <laughs> it's good. It's very, very good. So, okay. So we have this in here and I think what I was going to say, so let's just say your strawberries that you're using or whatever fruit you're using is maybe not as sweet as you want, a little tart or something. What you can do to sweeten it is to throw in a pitted date. And that should really, really kind of take it to the sweetness that you're looking for. If it's just still a little too sour for you. Oh, that's a great tip. That's great tip. Yeah, I love dates. And that's so funny. Kathy, when I was um, eating the standard American diet, well, first of all, I didn't, everything I used was refined sugar, but um, I didn't even know dates existed. Isn't that bad? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I think as a, you know, the whole American thing, it's fig newtons, like, right? So we knew about figs. Yeah. Yeah. Those okay. look really good. All your veggies all ready to go. Do you oh. usually make a few salads at a time when you do this? Like, can I make enough salads for three to four days or do you recommend just two days? No, I actually do this on Sunday. So Sundays are my meal prep days. And so I just set out, looks like a little bitty factory. And so I do about five salads. And if you put them in the fridge, and I put mine in the back of my fridge where it gets really, really cold, these last about five days. So nice. you can use them every day of the week. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to our second wettest um, ingredient, and that's going to be cherry tomatoes. Which is funny because I used to not like cherry tomatoes before I transitioned, and now I snack on them like candy. It's amazing. See, I'm I'm a little anti cherry tomatoes, but what I do is I um, actually dehydrate them and turn them into tomato powder to use as a seasoning. So I I love tomatoes, but I don't like the way they pop in my mouth, ah, which is okay. weird. But I will eat them if I chop them up. So I think slicing them like you did, in case anybody else has a anti cherry tomato person in their household, that would be a help. That's a good idea. And I'm going to try that, you, what you just said, too. Huh, try them. I never thought about that. I'm going to do that, Kathy. Oh, you're going to love it. Like, it goes great in dressing, sauces. I make a barbecue seasoning mix that uses a lot of tomato powder. It tastes, this is sad, but it tastes like wise potato, barbecue potato chips used to taste when I was growing up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember that brand. <laughs> I remember that brand. 
Okay, so now I've put in my cucumbers. And so now I'm gonna show you how this looks with the funnel. Makes it a little less messy. Genius. But you can put your carrots in there and use as much as you like. You know, if you like a little more carrots, use a little more. You know, it's all about customizing it to your taste buds. All right, so we've got our carrots in there that are shredded. And then so now I'm going to put in garbanzo beans. Now, if you're not a fan of garbanzo beans, don't let that hold you up. Select a bean that you like. It's completely okay. But I happen to be a huge fan of garbanzo beans. <laughs> For me personally. Okay. All right. And so now we're getting near the end here. I'm going to put broccoli in here. A little bit or as much as you like. We're going to do some red cabbage. Ooh. Do that. And then now we're ready for our driest ingredient, which in this case is going to be arugula. Or whatever greens you use. If you're not an arugula fan, go spinach or chard or it's totally up to you. All right. So this, hope you can see the glare is a little odd. Oh, no, you can see. It's pretty. Thank you. So this is your salad. So what you'll do is you'll seal it up, put it in the fridge, get it nice and cold. And when you're ready for it, shake it up fairly well. Okay. And you want to shake it up to where the dressing moves around. I always like to have a little extra dressing um, even after I uh, shake it up so I can just have more in case it didn't move around as much as I wanted it to. But that is it. And so this will last you five days. Um, I wouldn't go any longer than that, but it's really, really a quick grab. It's easy. It presents well. You can choose to dump it out if you want to and eat it in a bowl. I personally like to just eat it right from the jar. So. Oh, nice. That's that. Oh, I love that. So like what, let's talk about some other combinations. I have a like... A weird thing. Let me see if I can get that to go away. There we go. It said you twice on there, which was lovely, but oh. unreadable. So uh, Jackie said uh, she watches a lot of my stuff. She works at a health food store. She said she had all the date talk meant that she had to go eat a couple of dates. And oh. then Kathy said it used to be that dates were in the stores only at holiday time. That's true. It used to be kind of like a gift. That's right. That is true. I didn't think about that. And I love the idea of the strawberry dressing, especially since strawberry season is kind of just around the corner, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it feels where you are in Texas. It feels a lot more like spring here. <laughs> we'll have two days of super cold weather and then two days where I'm wearing shorts. Yeah, we're at, let me see, this morning when I woke up, we were at 21 degrees. So oh, wow. Texas is a little all over the place right now. We're just, we had an ice storm yesterday and it's, finally getting getting a little bit better today it's, it's just up and down but you know i'm ready for spring let's say that like real spring weather i'm i'm a big spring and fall person i could take a week of summer and a week of winter and then have all the rest but that's not happening so well, we're the same okay so if i didn't have chia seeds what would you use to thicken it with would you have an alternative or would you use some aquafaba or would you think about throwing in some flaxseed in there that's what i was about to say i would go flaxseed um aquafaba might you know i never thought about that but if i didn't have the chia my next would probably be the flax yeah okay because i'm thinking too blueberry like blueberry and some fresh herbs because the herbs are going to be coming out soon mm -hmm. like the strawberry thyme maybe Oh, I love rosemary and thyme. Oh. oh, they're so good. They're so good. And what other, would you ever do any steamed vegetables, like maybe steamed broccoli or cauliflower to put in these jars? Or do you think that that would throw off the longevity? Um, I think it would be okay. I'm not quite sure how long it would last, but I think that would be okay. Just layer it, you know, correctly. And I think it'd be fine. I don't know how, I've never done the steamed. Uh, so I don't know how long it would hold up, but you know, sounds delicious. <laughs> Chew <Chilas>, right? <laughs> I, bet be, I, bet I bet it'll be fine. 
Yeah, that's a good thing. I may try that. I really, really might try that. Okay. No, I love the idea of the berries as a base, though. And then chia mm-hmm. seeds, too, because that, that would give it that really thickness that the emulsion of like oil when you make a dressing is going to do. So that's going to give mm-hmm. a really great mouthfeel, which is so important. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other salad tips like or a special combination or anything like that? Or maybe something that's in the book you want to tease? Because Tiffany's book with all these mason jar salads are in the plant-based bundle that's only for sale through next Wednesday, I think. Yeah, the second. Um, is there another one in there? I make a oh, okay. So one of the one of my favorite go-tos when I am in the mood for like maybe a heavier breakfast is there's a, a breakfast taco, breakfast burrito in a jar. So good. I should have done that one next time. Oh, I need, that. need that one. Yeah, so just briefly, it's going to be in the same size jar because when I eat that, I kind of want a lot of that one. But yeah, it's got rice on the bottom. I do a, um, a seasoned black bean um, that I do overnight. And then what else is in there? Um, I do like a little bit of a, my, my cherry tomatoes. And then um, I do a little avocado. But that's if I'm going, and I'll top it with an avocado, but that's if I'm going to eat it that same day. I don't really like for it to sit a couple of days after that. But the breakfast burrito is good. And then to top it off, I take these, um, I take tortilla strips and strip them up with like a pizza cutter. Mm-hmm. Put them in my um, air fryer, let them crisp up. And then I put those on top. So that's kind of like the burrito that's holding your breakfast burrito together in a jar. That is my one of my favorite breakfast go tos when I'm in the mood for it. Well, yeah, so that, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Now, Kathy's saying so with the mason jar salads, it's not what most people think of when they think salad. She thinks lettuce at the base with toppings, and this was more toppings and less greens than she would expect. Nothing wrong with that, but she's just thinking it's not your typical salad. Do you ever do it where? You put in more greens with the things or how, how do you decide? So that's a very good question. So number one, it's customizable to your liking. So you want to, you can use, you can absolutely use more greens. Um, I actually always put the, uh, the liquid on the bottom just so the salad doesn't become soggy, Mm -hmm. but you know, with this, it's just customizable. You could throw some grains in there a couple of type of beans. You can have more than half of your jar with with greens. It's kind of up to you. It's a little bit different of a salad in a jar, but the concept is still the same. You can fill it up to your liking with whatever ingredient you want the most of. I love that. I was just thinking too, because I thought of quinoa to go in there, but I'm thinking if you had quinoa and brown rice, then in with that salad dressing, it's going to marinate and soak up those beautiful flavors. Mm -hmm. So that's way better than just throwing a salad together at the spur of the moment. Yeah. No, I tell people don't overthink it. If you can put your salad or whatever you're going to going to eat in a bowl or, um, or on a plate, you can do the same thing in a Mason jar. Just, Customize it to your liking. Uh, I love that. And I believe it's Anthea. If I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm really sorry. She said you could dump it out on a bed of greens, right? Too. Oh, so you could have yeah. all the stuff together. And then maybe Tiffany wants arugula and Cheryl wants kale. And I want romaine lettuce that day. So if you had a, that would be really good too. Because if you have a small family of like two to three, you probably could mm-hmm. pack that big jar up with the dressing and everything and then Mm -hmm. still let people decorate it the way they want but i love that you put like the carrots and the cabbage and some green because it's so pretty yeah thank you yeah and another thing that came to mind um you could actually dump it out even on a bed of greens so many things you can do with this absolutely i like that because I'm not always a good meal prepper. And some of it's because I'm always developing recipes too. Mm-hmm. But those days that I have a teaspoon of energy left, <laughs> that's no good for me, right? 
Um, yeah. And so Ronnie is asking, do you empty your salad into a bowl and chop it before you eat it? I think that's a Chef AJ style, right? Because she uses the, the chopper and puts use her yeah. little holland bowl and stuff. Yeah, it depends on what mood I'm in. But yeah, I actually have that. Where is my chopper? It's like one of the best choppers ever. I thought I had it right here. Yeah, it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I want to chop salad and sometimes I just want to dig in as is and leave everything as is. So just kind of, it just fluctuates. I like that because I'm very particular. Like I, I get annoyed if I'm getting a salad to take out and you've just got this whatever you're going to put on it on the side because you know mm -hmm. like two leaves of lettuce is going to taste like that so at home mm -hmm. i always toss sa our salads obviously i'm not using the dressings that are out anyhow but i just hate it when you get a, you know i don't know i'm just particular that way so i'm sorry if i've come to your house and you've sat a nice dressing on the table because i did <laughs> think something so <laughs> But no, that's when I take all my stuff and I'm making a mess all over the table. Because I like yeah. it when you get a little bit of that. Because to me, the dressing is what changes it from a bunch of stuff into this cohesive meal. Absolutely. That's why I say make sure you, you know, once you prep your mason jars, have a little extra dressing. Have a little. It's a, there's always room for extra dressing. Especially when it's made of berries chia seed and water right can't get any easier than that no and i i like the idea about the date as well and mm -hmm. if you guys are looking and i don't you may have something like this too i have what i call a plain salt substitute blend like i make a fancy one because most of the fancy it's cajun herb it's got all these things that maybe you don't want in whatever mm -hmm. you're making so i use i mix together a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of ground celery seed. I usually go ahead and blend it in a spice grinder, and mm -hmm. it gets all those salt places in your mouth, it goes, and it kind of dings it, and celery has a little bit of sodium in it naturally. Mm -hmm. So if you're transitioning and you're like, I need a little something, that's a really easy thing, and most people, even in standard American diets, have those three things in their spice drawer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have something you use to kind of bring out something like that if someone's missing it? Yeah, I would say I probably use the same thing, that celery is key. And I wasn't even aware of just how much of a salty little nudge that it can give your food. Because coming from the standard American diet, you know, your palate is like, I need a lot of salt. I need it salty, salty. So after I finally neuro adapted, and I started bringing in more celery. I was like, yeah, that's, that's, there's a, there's a little salty taste there. And that's all you need. It's nice and subtle and it's just not um, overbearing um, on the palate. So I would suggest the same thing. That's great. And you can always sprinkle a little bit of ground celery seed too in a pinch. Yeah. And I also use lemon too, if I want that little salty kick, a little bit of lemon, lime, more so lemon because yeah, yeah, the sour and the salty are almost near on your palate. So just a little bit of lemon and you're like, huh, it's better than salt, I'm gonna tell you. We put lime on our corn and then we put it in the air fryer and it's amazing. Ooh. It's amazing. I'm gonna try that, lime. Yeah, it, it, and because also if you put your corn in the air fryer, it caramelizes ever so slightly. So it does mm -hmm. get this interesting flavor to it too. And uh, Gina says she's made my salt substitute before. Um, okay, and Ronnie has another question. Do you need to fill the bottle to the top to cut down on space for air? I'm thinking of using my vacuum sealer with a mason jar attachment. Do you do any fancy, fancy stuff like that? Wow, you are fancier than I am. I have not done that. I don't know. I don't have a question for that. I mean, an answer for that. Um, that's okay. So what I'm hearing by you not having an answer is that in fact, the way that you're putting everything together is preserving yeah. it just fine. So, yeah. but you are usually filling up your jars pretty darn close to the top, correct? I am. Okay. I really am. It's to the lid. So I've never done the vacuum uh, one, but no, it's, I get to the top as much as I can. And Gina is saying, 
that Ronnie probably could do it and might last longer, but I think five days is a good time. Like if you start wanting fresh vegetables to last that much longer, yeah. if you're me, that means they yeah. might end up in the compost because you might yeah. forget about them. It's a little tricky. And Joanne likes lime on the corn on the cob too. She's, she's had that before. I have been missing out. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, there's just something magical and it's still it's even better if you put some ground chili on there um, oh. i'm assuming with you being a flavor queen as well as me that and being in texas that you've got some chili powders up your mm -hmm. sleeves um, yeah and i love making my own ancho chili powder and different things and putting them in different blends you know what i might try that the corn with the lime on it in my um, breakfast burrito in a jar. I think that, that would be so good. I'm going to do that, Kathy. That would be so good. Yeah. When I do it, I'll take a picture and tag you. That sounds, yeah, like my taste buds can already say, yeah, that's going to work. And with fresh corn, like when, obviously it's a while before fresh corn is happening, but if you got some fresh corn, you could use that as a dressing base. I could. A little I cilantro, could. some lime, maybe a little bit, either like a piece of reconstituted ancho chili or some some um, powder. I, obviously, Ooh. I dehydrate a lot of things. I'm cheap is what it is. Is I don't want to pay $7 for ancho chili powder when I can go to Walmart and get yeah. a big bag of ancho chilies for $3 that'll make powder enough for me to give to all my friends for Christmas. You know what I don't have? And so it's funny you say that because I've been thinking that I need to add it to my list. I do not have a dehydrator. So how often are you really using it? You know, I use it fairly often. I got a Breville toaster oven air, which uh -huh. they've come down in prices, but they're still expensive. So yeah. and if you're so you can use your air regular air fryer, like your square pull the basket out. And mm -hmm. if you don't have an air fryer, you can go to Amazon click up at the top, go to warehouse, that's returns. And usually you can snag yourself a six, five, six quart air fryer for like 50, 60 bucks. Same thing with an instant pot duo. It might have a dent, but I don't care. So that's one way you can do it in your oven on low, which is way mm -hmm. too high maintenance for me. Cause I, I'm, but another thing to do is go to your local thrift store or a couple of them. You know those white round Nesco dehydrators yeah. that stack up? You will mm -hmm. find one for five dollars to six dollars. Five dollars. Ah. Yeah, and so the thing is, is you can run all those things through the top um, top rack of your dishwasher to sterilize it and things like that. Or you can even order new little mats to go in there if you if you feel the need. Most of the ones that I see have never been used. Someone gifted them. And okay. someone gifted me theirs. And then I just, I slice my cherry tomatoes in half. I put them wet side up, stack them in there. I go to bed and maybe tomorrow they're all done. Ah. And then I just ground it into powder. I also, we talked about this earlier in my other live today is that I buy my mushrooms a lot at the Asian market. I love to go to different markets like the Hispanic market, the Indian market, because you get things super cheap, super fresh. Mm -hmm. So at the Asian market, a lot of times I can get mushrooms quite cheap, especially shiitakes. Yep. They're often much bigger and they have these big kind of gnarly stems that you're not that interested in putting in your stir fry. So I, cut, I set them aside, I chop them, I don't even chop, I slice them, put them in the dehydrator, and then I'll put them in something for whenever I need them, throw them in the spice grinder, free mushroom powder. Mmm. Okay, you may have convinced me to get a dehydrator. It's just been on my mind, so that this may have tipped me over. Okay, and we, we can talk for sure, and you can even look, they have some fancier dehydrators, Mm -hmm. On, I think I saw one on Amazon Warehouse that was like a hundred bucks. So I mean, it just depends on your level of commitment. But you yeah. totally can do this in your oven, usually on the lowest setting. And if your oven goes very low, you probably don't have to pay that much attention. And apples mm -hmm. here, we've got so many people here. I'm not sure what. Okay, 
Joanne's saying like Mexican street corn going back to our dressing extravaganza. Uh, okay, that would be nice, yeah. Okay, and, and Joanne is also saying a number of the air fryers now have dehydration. So like this guy over here, oh, you can't see it. I'm in a different one. Oh, now you can see my sweatpants that I was trying not to show you. <gasps> Woo, <laughs> I just told Tiffany about that. I'm like, I'm not going to move back, but watch me. I will. And so that one has a dehydrator function. This is like a hundred bucks. You can, this one's Sur La Tab that I got at Costco. It's, you can't buy it at Sur La Tab and you can see an instant pot version and 17 other brand versions that are exactly the same. So, uh -huh. and so that's a really nice cheap entry level. A lot of people get the Breville. Like, which air fryer do you have, Tiffany? I've got, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of it. But Okay, don't no. worry. Yeah. <laughs> didn't mean to put you on the spot. See, it's, since I'm like the appliance whisperer, I have like, go, even right now, I give away a lot. I've used the GoWise. I have a Philips. I have a Breville. I have this one. Yeah. I have like eight Instant Pots, and as new versions come on, I give some away but um ronnie said he started dehydrating frozen mixed vegetables peas corn string beans and carrots and uses them in soups and stews and Ooh. i think that's because i did a class on hot beverage mixes where i made like hot cocoa powder and so like oh. literally it's 50 percent oats 50 percent cocoa and then you mm -hmm. could put coconut sugar in there however if that is not on your agenda you could just do this and make date paste, and when you heat it up, add your date paste, right? So just mm -hmm. dates and water. And like this one, I'm, I've made so many mixes. I, all my mason jars, I'm gonna have to buy new ones to make your salads. This one is <laughs> lavender, so I actually took like a teaspoon of lavender and whirled Ooh. it up. I had some dried mint. You could put Ooh. cinnamon, right? And so, the reason I'm even talking about that is so he talked about the vegetable mix. I bought some vegetable mix. And so I have like a basil ginger um, drinking broth, dry Ooh. bouillon, and then a rosemary thyme cayenne. So those are other things that you can do. So like once you, the a dehydrator is an entryway. Like actually, usually I do get your spice grinder and then we go dehydrator. <laughs> Because you can make so many things that mm -hmm. are quite expensive normally. Yeah. And I like the way, because salads, like when we're, when we're being bad right now and we're getting things out, we're getting things at fancy bowl places, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's $12, like just at a regular old place. And we had, and it may not have everything that's perfect for your dietary needs, depending on what mm -hmm. yours are. Mm -hmm. But making a salad at home and making a dressing at home because bottled dressings mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, did you use any specific um, balsamic? Is there one that you recommend that you love the most or do you use flavors? I love California balsamic. That is okay. just the best. So I have probably like almost every flavor that Thomas has to offer. <laughs> You know, um, I've tried, oh, you know what? I did a dressing once and I used the apple pie. What was it? The apple pie oh. um, vinegar that Thomas makes from California Balsamics. It was delicious. What did I put that with? I can't remember. Um, I don't know if I did it with a, maybe I did put apple. Either way, all of his vinegars are delicious. Um, those are the ones that are my go-to. Oh, I love that. And actually, like if I make pancakes, like, so I mm -hmm. make buckwheat pancakes with buckwheat and oats and banana and stuff. I have before, and I don't think it was from there, but I had gotten a maple balsamic. Ooh. And I put some maple balsamic on there, and it was amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. You have to tell me where you found that. I'll I have to look it up and see if I still have any of it. It might have been a local store, but I'll find Ooh. it for sure. Because his... um. Is it the, is it teriyaki flavored yep. or it's the one that's ginger and garlic? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm trying to work on um, a salt free kind of soy sauce, umami sauce. Mm. So that we can do more stir fries from my salt free people. Yeah. And Apple has a question. So he, 
Tiffany, I've been prepping my salad jars with all the veg. Every day I put a jar on top of a bed of greens for my salad. So handy. I love that. Yeah. I thought it was a question. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was a question. <laughs> no, like, it is very handy. Yeah. We like questions and answers here. <laughs> Do you have a favorite spice? Oh. Oh, I gotcha. You know, probably smoked paprika. Me too. <gasps> okay. Yep. Raven Claws and Spice Sisters. That's who we are. See? Yeah. I like that. We need to hang out more. You need to move to North Carolina. I will. And okay, I can do that. And then next time I'll have my Raven Claw shirt on. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Oh, but, and you know, I used to, before pre pandemic, every year for Halloween, I did a multi course. Um, sit down gothic dinner party that for four years yeah. was a Harry Potter sit down multi course dinner party. Oh, yeah. I'm, a I'm gonna have to come to that. Okay, no, you are totally invited. <laughs> and like, I still like back on the other side, I still have my candles hanging from the ceiling oh, and some man. Cornish pixies in a basket up there, and I've got keys hanging from that ceiling, keeping my pandemic happy. In my own yeah. little like universal studio. <laughs> well, Harry Potter keeps Harry Potter can keep you happy. That's for sure. It's it's true. I do, and whenever I'm shooting a cookbook or something, and I find myself getting nervous, I put it on because it just like soothes me. Yeah, a lot. So Tiffany, is there anything else we need to know about you that you want to share with us? And I did find the correct Instagram. Um, handle for you but if you want to mention some of your socials they can find you at invite plants to every meal.com and it is to on your website right yes on the website it's invite plants to every meal.com instagram it is not <laughs> instagram, i found that it, out <laughs> yeah instagram is invite plants you have to put in the number two every meal don't do the to or you'll go to another site that's been hacked don't go there <laughs> yeah you don't want to do that so invite plants the number two every meal on instagram and then everything else on facebook i'm invite plants the number uh two every meal and my website invite plants to every meal the only number two is on instagram okay so you totally need to go and sign up for her newsletter so you can be up on all this stuff you want to buy the bundle so you can get her awesome book with all these goodies you're going to get my dry spice mix class or dry mix class one mm. sauces and bullions last night we made two dry mix class two <laughs> gluten-free baking mixes i believe there's going to be a three and maybe even a four because Ooh. I'm a little obsessive. Use your neurosis for the power of good, people. Use your neurosis for the power of good. And um, Joanne, I don't know if you saw that, says her favorite spice is the one she happens to want to use at the moment. But I, I think <laughs> we're Southern girls, right? So smoky, like you grow up on smoky foods. And there is, um, do, you, do you use liquid smoke at all? I do. I do yeah. occasionally. I, I'm kind of... A liquid smoke connoisseur so like i had like i found a gift pack of all these different flavors and i was like oh my god like seriously i was like other girls like rings i'm excited about liquid smoke <laughs> yeah we, we might be related because yeah i'm excited now about spices and seasonings and marinades like that's yeah no rings i want spices spices that dazzle well this big drawer is full of spices and then i have two containers of backup spices and like all my Indian spices in my pantry. And Gina's you know saying, oh, go ahead. I said I must really, really be changing now because I get excited when it's time to refill my spice jars. Like I'm like, whoo, I'll cut on some music. I mean, it's just like a, a fun date night with spices. I, I line them all out and I fill them up. That's exciting. And then I put them back in the correct place. And I'm telling you, I, I was never like that. But. I love that. I, and I think that you and once the pandemic comes down, we have to meet somewhere because I suspect we could shop together. Like, do you like yeah. to look at all the things and see what's yep, new? Yeah, it'd be dangerous. Yep. And we can go to like some spice stores and vinegar stores. Oh. I don't know. Maybe we need to have a little like, 
retreat that we turn into like a little show. I think this could be fun. I'm so in. Okay, yay. <laughs> um, and Gina's saying that you have a soup to make in a jar too in your, right? So do you want to tell us a little more about that, about what yeah. else you have in there? Yeah, so this is really, really simple. So remember earlier when I said meal jar 101 is to put your liquid in the bottom? Throw that out when you're making a soup because everything is in liquid. All right, so this one is going to be the, um, the Chinese noodle soup. And so it's super simple. I've already taken this broth and I boiled it. Yeah, can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I've taken this broth and I've already boiled it. It's about a cup and a half. You can use more. That's just where I started. But when I boiled it, I put some fresh ginger in there, garlic, and a little bit of white miso paste, just to kind of give it a little bit of a kick mm. flavor. And so that's all boiled. It's cool now. And then what's gonna go in the soup? I have some more shredded carrots. Hope you can see that. <laughs> Green mm -hmm. onions, mushrooms. Use any type of mushrooms that you like. I've got, now we're not doing the noodle. We're actually, our noodle is actually going to be zucchini. And then we're going to top it with bok choy. So mm -hmm. now this is, I mean, you can throw this together. Super, super simple. You know what? I think I'm going to do this first. Now this, remember, I told you it doesn't matter the order. So I'm going to do my zucchini. And the, you just grated the zucchini. You didn't use a spiralizer or anything, right? You just yeah, I grated this one. Normally, I um, I had the wrong blade on. Normally, I spiralize it, but yes, this one is grated. But no, I like it because not everybody has a spiralizer. Or perhaps yeah. they upgraded to a fancy spiralizer that didn't work the last time they tried to use it in a live. Ooh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, that par for the course. But I love that. So this is looking all pretty too already. Yeah. So I put my carrots in there. I have mushrooms to put in there. Okay. And I have some, yeah, I love garlic. I have to put my garlic in there because I just love garlic. And I never pay attention to the recipe when it comes to garlic because I always put more in it. I'm that person. And see, I'm that way with some spices. Oh, yeah, I think we're, I think we're related, Kathy. I'm pretty sure of that. I like that. Now, and I put some onions in there. Okay. And then you can put your broth in. And is that just, other than the additions you made, because you added in some ginger and some miso, is it just like uh, a plain vegetable stock that you started off with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, could we do something like a dry bouillon and water or yes. a bouillon paste and water? Okay. You absolutely can. All right. And this is as simple as it is. All right. And so now what you would do is, of course, put your lid on it, um, put it in the refrigerator, and then the next day or whenever you're going to eat it, um, bring it out. I let mine get room temperature. Mm -hmm. um, because I sometimes use it in the, I warm it up in the microwave, or if you want to pour everything out and heat it up in um, a saucepan, um, that's kind of up to you. But definitely, if you're going to use a microwave, let it get room temperature. Make sure you take the lid off. And <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's no it's metal good. in the microwave. No, no metal no, in no, the microwave. <laughs> but you about how many? You can sell it after that. Yeah, yeah. We've all, like, I, I remember the first time I had a little bit of gold on some plate that I didn't realize was real gold. That, yeah. that, there was not a big disaster. About how long, if you put that in the microwave, because obviously on the stovetop, you're heating it until it's warm and starts to kind yeah. of steam up a little bit. In the microwave, yep. how many minutes about? I'd say, yeah, I'd say two to three minutes. Okay, so not very long at all. It doesn't take long. It just depends on if you like steaming, piping hot, or you just want it just enough to just kind of go down with a little bit of warmth. But three minutes is probably probably about the, the spot right there. Okay. And I'm even just starting to think about other things too, because I have a spiralized zucchini, like red Thai curry soup kind of thing. And you could do something oh. like that there or do like, I also spiralize cucumbers in oh, the okay. um, summer and use that as a base for things because it's very filling. Mm -hmm. 
I just, yeah. I love this idea. You've really got me thinking about so many different ways to go. Oh man, I'm telling you, if you have the right spices or, or willing to play around with the right spices, there's so many flavors you can create here. Yeah. That's funny. And something else you mentioned, uh, it took my mind to it. You said, um, oh, we were talking about, oh, the lid going in the, in the microwave. It's one of those moments. I'll tell you another moment oh, that I hate. I don't have it happen anymore, but man, I did it a couple of times. Not paying attention does not happen anymore. You know that sound when you're like, oh, OK, I removed the pits from all the dates and then you put it in your blender. Oh, my. That happened twice. And uh, I think I might have been doing a live on one of them. I'm like, oh, no. Is that the sound I think it is? Yeah. <laughs> and there's no return after that. So it's another one of those moments like, oops, I didn't pay attention. But, yeah. So yeah. what Tiffany's saying, so those of you who may be new to using dates, even <laughs> if the package says pitted dates, mm -mm. maybe, maybe not. So no, I actually okay. split them in half before I even soak them because it yep. could just have a little piece of a pit and your blender will yell at you. Yeah. And it'll be this teeny tiny, but as that blender's going, it sounds like a rock in there. You're like, oh, you just have to start over. Yeah. Yep. The, the exciting stories of doing lives. There's always <laughs> something fun that's going to happen. And you just never know. That's why we love having you here. And we're so glad that you came to join us today. Um, Tiffany, it was, as always, such a pleasure. And I can't wait till you move to North Carolina so we can hang out and have coffee every day or tea or salads in a jar. Or Harry Potter talk over tea. Ooh, oh, yes. So much Harry Potter. I have Harry Potter tea cups. Oh, you got me on that one. I'm no, jealous. I'm I'm the biggest geek ever. So, and I do have kind of a whole food ish sort of butterbeer substitute because oh. butterbeer is not whole food plant based. It is usually brown sugar and coconut milk. So there, you can do a vegan version, but if you do date paste with some vanilla, that mm. is really close to a caramel butterscotchy flavor. And you can put Ooh. that in some warm milk Obviously, I mean non-dairy milk of your choice, oat milk, soy milk, almond milk, whatever your milk is, and you can warm that up, and then you have a warm butter beer that fits with your diet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that, too. I think that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and Gina's saying, I hope your pup is okay. His tummy, is, we did a live oh. yesterday, and he was, when he feels nauseous, he licks everything like the carpet. I don't know what his deal is, but he, oh. get, he threw up again today. So I think his tummy is still a little, but we're keeping an eye on He's He did fine yesterday. He begged for every food item that came through the door. So oh. I don't think he's on, you know, oh, and Apple says, I'm here for the Potterverse love. Maybe we need to have a Harry Potter live with Harry Potter things that we make. And we can tweak Harry Potter food. Mm -hmm. We can. Okay. I think you're thinking like I'm thinking. Yep. And yep. Okay. So that's going to have to be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, I am going to let you have the rest of your day and life instead of keeping you here like I want to. So, but it's been such a pleasure. You guys don't forget if you haven't already gotten the bundle, depending on where you're watching this somewhere, there's a link to buy the bundle. And if you're getting it and be sure to read below that, if you buy through my link, I got some instructions for you for a prize because I like prizes and I like you. So anything else you want to say, Tiffany, before we head out? No, just thank you for having me, Kathy. I'm a fan of yours and um, just keep bringing us delicious recipes. We'll keep showing up. Absolutely. And I'm going to keep bringing you and you're going to have to come back and hang out. Now you're popular. It's just the way it's going to be. Oh. No, my pleasure to come back. I'll be ready. Awesome. Uh, and I'm going to be on Tiffany's Instagram show on Tuesday. I'm doing like two or three of these a day. So it sounds like I'm spacey because I am. And I haven't even like, I, I, 
I'm not that far yet, but I'm going to be sending it out in an email. So get on my email list so that you can come watch us again on another platform. And I'm going to do some stuff that time. Okay, guys, have an amazing rest of your day. And it's the weekend. So I'm going to ask you what I always ask you. So do one kind thing for yourself today. And if you have just a little bit of energy, do something kind for someone or something else. Okay, have an amazing day and I'll see you guys actually in a live tomorrow. Thank you.